वेलकम बैक टू भक्ति योगा पार्ट टू भक्ति योगा इज द साइंस ऑफ इमोशंस कल्चर द गेन मास्टी ओवर द इमोशंस इज द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ भक्ति योगा लेट लुक एट द स्कीमेटिक विच गिव्स द होल समरी ऑफ भक्ति योगा वी आर ऑल एंडोर्ड विथ टू क्वालिटीज आसुरी एंड दैवी संपत्ति once we resolve that we develop the daivi sampat and reduce the asuri sampat we are on the path towards the goal we grow systematically from kama to prema prema to bhakti then to sakshatkara sakshatkara in form is saguna sakshatkara then various types of samadhis then the nirvikalp samadhi or nirguna sakshatkar and the parabhakti ultimately leading to moksha the board of all bliss knowledge freedom and power that is the absolute silence so this is the whole journey of bhakti yoga we have been seeing the whole essence of bhakti yoga is to learn the art of sublimation if we try to control the emotions we may end up with suppression but how to move towards sublimation the art is to slow down it is energy management slow down all the reactions in eating in thinking in walking in talking everywhere there should be full mastery full awareness and slowness when there is a need for speed yes certainly you can invoke the energies and use it but don't just waste it that is the whole essence for that we have to convert our gross violent emotions which enslave us towards the subtler and cultured emotions kama has to be transformed into prema what characterizes prema is one of sacrifice it is moving from rajas to sattva is to move from the nyaya level to the dharma level it is continuously giving and giving all the material possessions without expectation of anything in return while in kama we saw it is one of give and take i give something so i expect that you give me something in return this goes on and on therefore we have to raise to the next level the prema the real friendship and from there now we have to go to the next step and that's where the bhakti enters into picture to move from prema to bhakti we need to add on the dimension of surrender surrender is the process of prapatti or sharanagati and that art of gaining mastery over the emotions through intensive and extensive techniques of bhakti we are going to now start learning first let us concentrate on the intensive techniques of bhakti called devotional sessions devotional sessions are specially designed sessions which help us to transform ourselves from the grosser emotions to the subtler and it consists of the trifold process of invoking the emotions intensification and diffusion of emotions when we sit together in a group and start singing start participating in various singing bhajans namavadis don't send so on in the devotional session we must carefully watch what is happening to our emotions how the emotions are getting evoked and how the emotions get amplified intensified and how the emotions go back to the diffusion it is something like a intensive training for a wrestler who goes into the akhada and starts exercising himself either in a gym or in a place where he gets the training from his teacher gradually he learns to build up your strength by repeated compression and relaxation of the muscles and by so doing repeatedly again and again again and again he finds that his power goes on increasing to lift higher and higher weights he becomes stronger and stronger in the same way we have not trained our emotions and 
in the intensive techniques we start training our emotions by stimulating the emotions triggering those emotional cells in the brain and amplifying the emotions intensifying them and allowing them to diffuse this trifold process is inherently built in the devotion sessions by which we start gaining mastery and control over the emotions look at the type of things that we use here the universal prayers normally the devotion sessions start with universal prayer for the good of everyone then we use the bhajans the namavadis and the dhuns these are the ones which help us to amplify the emotions because in namavadis there is continuous repetition and as you go on repeating and repeating they get energized and they start growing they start getting intensified dhuns are still simpler things in which the amplification takes place i remember i went for one of the sessions way back and in that ramanami session i was sitting and everybody has started singing the ramanam ram 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 and the same thing went on and on 15 minutes half an hour one hour two hours everybody was getting saturated their emotions are getting intensified two hours three hours the whole night started at 9 o'clock went on up to night 2 o'clock people went into almost an ecstatic state and this is the process of intensification of the emotions and the emotions that starts intensifying it spreads throughout the body and brings about wonderful results and that is the second phase and at the end there is complete diffusion of the emotions and the technique that we use is called nirvana shataka it is a shatpadi with six verses composed by shankaracharya and in this there is smooth softening and making things gentler and softened and softened mano buddhya hankara chittani naham न च श्रोत्र जिह्वे न च घ्राण नेत्रे न च व्योम भूमि न तेजो न वायु हो चिदानंद रूप शिवो हम शिवो चिदानंद रूप शिव शिव चिदानंद रूप शिव शिव दट स्मूथ साफ्ट जेंटल म्यूजि एंड प्रेग्नेंट विथ अ मीनिंग remembering our self i am not just this body i am not this prana i am not this mind i am neither the intellect but i am that infinite pure consciousness with that meaning when we go on chanting sudaning and sudaning takes place and the excessive rush of energy is inside will all get diffused and slowly go back and wonderful sublimation start taking place and this is the whole science behind the devotional sessions the intensive techniques to harness our emotions and the nirvana shataka is a wonderful composition which is followed by silence the whole mind becomes so silent so wonderfully happy blissful and when this training is given to the emotions day after day weeks after weeks months and months after months and over years there is going to be wonderful training of the emotions 
we know how to invoke a particular emotion, how to amplify them and how to diffuse them. And when this takes place, then there is immense inner joy. So, the devotional sessions are meant to train our emotions, gain mastery over the emotions and we request all the people to participate with an inner awareness to invoke the emotions and repeat for amplification of the emotions and diffuse and enjoy the whole session. Every evening when we go on doing this process, then the enjoyment continues and there is bliss, more and more bliss and enjoyment continues. That is the intensive technique. Now we come to the extensive techniques. In the intensive technique, we allot certain duration of time, every day maybe half an hour, 45 minutes or one hour and sit in the devotion session and participate. But then this entire thing should spread throughout the day and that is the extensive technique that is talked about in bhakti. In gaining mastery over the emotions, these extensive techniques are called as anusandhana, that is recalling. And how do we do that? We had already taken a resolve that we move from violent emotions to softer emotions. We have to reduce our negative emotions and develop the positive emotions and that is the whole process of anusandhana or what you call recollection. So, every morning we make a determination not to get angry, not to get enslaved by anger and the objective is to gain mastery over anger, over the outburst of reactions in the form of anger and once we decide not to get enslaved by anger, start right from the morning and once we come out with this resolve and you start going for your work, suddenly you see your arch enemy right in the morning coming in front of you whom you hated and suddenly you burst into action, you burst into anger and you are boiling inside and how you wish you had not seen him this morning. We forget all the resolve that we made in the morning that I am not going to become angry throughout the day, but I became angry again and again as usual several times in the day when things did not happen to my liking, when people started torturing me, touching my ego, several circumstances and when this continued on and on, the whole day was left with no change and I return and in the night before I sleep, I have to completely review the day. When I review the day, I understand that I became angry as usual as normal and write down a diary and start writing the diary as to how many times I became angry today and make a resolve tomorrow, I am not going to become angry come what may, whatever may be the trigger from outside, I am not going to get angry with a resolve, you go into sleep and it soaks down and next morning when you get up, again you come out with a stronger resolve and start getting into action again. And when this happens, gradually after three days, after five days, six days, you are about to get angry and you are about to scold, suddenly a click occurs inside, no, no, I am not going to get angry, that is the first success. Now the memory has come into exercise and tell to yourself, I am not going to become angry. And this first success is the breakthrough and this breakthrough continues and day by day the number of times you become angry goes on reducing and soon maybe within 20 days or one month or two months you will find the number of times you are becoming angry becomes extremely small. I remember we had one of the students, an elderly student who was given to outbursts violently. Every day he would go into tantrums several times and when we gave this methodology, he took voluntarily with great hope and started on his journey. And after one week he came and told me 
sir, what a miraculous change in my life. I had tried to control my anger several times in my life earlier, but never did I succeed. But this time, I started writing my diary, please look at it. When I looked at the diary, the first day, he had become angry 17 times. Second day, the third day, 18 times, then 16 times, 14 times, again it jumped up to 17 and now it started coming down to 12 and 10 and 8. At the end of the month, when he brought the whole summary, he had not become angry for the last 5 days. He said, it is a miracle in my life. How does this happen? Normally, we forget and forgetfulness is a key feature of enslavement. And what we do here is go on remembering, remembering, remembering and change our inner software by which we start developing that inner awareness. So, we have to recall several times during the day and when you go on doing it, the number of times we become angry goes on reducing. And initially the success shows up in action. What do I mean by action? Initially, the anger will be so violent that when you get angry, you cannot control yourself. You go on there and beat him. In the barbarous earlier days and even today in the undeveloped sectors of our country and the globe, the husbands beat their wives, thrash them and they become angry and their ego is touched when certain things happen which they do not like. And this is at the level of action. If you are at this level, then you withdraw. Your anger comes and you are aware that you are becoming angry and you are about to hit. Say, no, stop it and you come back. As a father, you are about to hit your child for the mistake it has done. You are really angry and when you are about to hit, suddenly your hand stops and you go back. First success. But you are scolding the child and making the child feel guilty. This goes on, but at the second level, you stop working at the word level, the walk level, the speech level. We know the horrendous effect that can happen when you use the wrong words and all the friendship that we may build over years and years can all vanish in no time if we use a few wrong words. So therefore, it is very necessary to control our words. Though we are in the cultured society, often our words are too harsh, they are so cutting and you show your anger through these cutting words of sharpness, then you find that you start softening them and you stop scolding, you stop using such derogatory, sharp, critical comments. Therefore, you have the second level success. Then you start observing the anger that is coming up inside in the mind itself and say, no, I am not going to become angry even at the mind level. Kaya, vacha, manasa, it is said. At the action level, at the speech level and at the thought level, you should start gaining control and mastery over the anger. And that is how there is progress. Kaya, the gross physical level, then the talk level, the sense level, then the mind level. And when you go on doing it, we start gaining control over anger. And this is how yoga purifies at all levels, physical level, sense level and the mind level. So this is called anusandhana, anusandhana, recalling it again and again. And just as we try to eliminate a asuri sampat, a negative thing, we also should start doing anusandhana on a positive thing. Choose a positive thing of your choice. Maybe that the whole day I want to be smiling and I want to have that santosha and to have that santosha, to have that peace and tranquility and wonderful satisfaction that we start practicing anusandhana. How do I do anusandhana? In the morning when I get up, I will determine that I am going to remember my happiness, 
basically I am all happy. My original nature is infinite happiness and bliss. So let me be happy throughout the day. You know. And you start off the day in the morning when you get up with a resolve to maintain the smile on the face. Then if you are habituated, do some morning yoga practices, keep the smile on the face and the relaxation. Then before breakfast, before lunch, if you take in between tea, before taking tea, and afternoon tea, evening, if you take some snacks, and before evening dinner, and before going to sleep, write down how many times we were able to recall, and invariably in the beginning, hardly you remember, because our habit of forgetfulness overtakes us, but gradually with practice day after day, with maintenance of a diary, we will be able to recall several times and the happiness, the bliss and silence, everywhere story starts coming up and during the yoga practices, while getting up, during the breakfast and tea, evening, snacks, all oh, that night before you are going to sleep. When you go on doing it, slowly you will find that it percolates everywhere at all times and that fragrance of happiness spreads wonderfully. This is how the Asuri Sampath and the Daivi Sampath can be developed in the right direction. The Asuri Sampath reduced the violent emotions, Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Moha, Mada, Matsarya. We will track down what is our limitation, start reducing that and then start developing the positive things the Daivi Sampath and this is called extensive method. Therefore, in the intensive method, you stay and see that you continuously operate, train your emotional faculty, invocation, amplification, diffusion. But in the Anusandhana, I spread throughout the day, remembering that again and again. And that is the speciality. And we develop a life of sacrifice and service prema featured by sacrifice and service and our carnal desires get transformed into prema and this is how we start gaining mastery over the emotions. And this mastery over the emotions will help to eradicate our Duryodhana that is the enslavering forces of our emotions, the violent emotions enslavering us and not allowing to do the right things. I know the right thing, but I have no inclination to do the right things. Why? Because the violent emotions are so powerful, it enslaves us. Therefore, with the practice of intensive and extensive techniques, slowly you start blossoming your personality, gaining control and mastery over the emotions, and you will be able to eradicate the weaknesses at the Manomaya Kosha, you will be able to vanquish Duryodhana from our midst. And that brings us the vanishing of the Adhi. Adhi is because of the Duryodhana within us. It is the Adhis which are responsible for all the Vyadhis and the diseases at the body level. The imbalance at the mind level in the Manomaya Kosha called Adhi percolates down through the Pranamaya Kosha and becomes a Vyadhi or a disease at the body level. And we may be suffering from different ailments like asthma, diabetes, hypertension, heart problem, epilepsy, migraine, irritable bowel syndrome, series of these modern common ailments which have started engrossing us. And the root cause is all in the Banomaya Kosha due to lack of emotional mastery because we have not been able to gain control over the emotions. The Adhi percolates down to the Pranamaya Kosha, comes down to the physical body, becomes a Vyadhi through the emotional reactions, through the autonomic imbalance and the endocrine imbalance, comes down and stays and you suffer. Once you reverse the whole process by eradicating the Adhis, the Vyadhis will start vanishing and this is the total approach of yoga. By so doing, gaining mastery over the emotions, we start growing healthier, happier and we can start spreading that message of love, harmony and peace everywhere. These are the grasser techniques. Then Arjuna says, alright, <coughs> you have been telling that you can get the glimpse 
by doing this bhakti, by surrender, you will be able to reach the great heights. Please show me. Eva metadhyatha tattvam atmanam parameshwaram drashtum ichamite rupam aishwaram purushottamam Shri Bhagavanu vacham natumam shakyase drashtum anenaiva svachakshusham divyan dadamite chakshuho Vashyabe Yoga Maishwaram. Answering the question of Arjuna, Krishna says, Okay, you want to see that infinite consciousness in action, in manifestation, which is called Sakshatkara. It is the culmination of the Bhakti. It is the culmination of total surrender. Now I am convinced that you have surrendered totally to me. And you are asking me to show that real Vishwarupa Darshana and now I am going to show you. But your normal eyes cannot see this infinite form. What to talk of this gross eye? It cannot see even the sun. It will get burnt. How can you see that effulgence of mine, of the universal form? Therefore, I am going to give you the divine eyes, Dadamite Divyam Chakshahu and I am going to show you the Divya Darshana. And that is the realm of Sakshatkara. The Bhakti transforms itself to higher and higher realms to reach Sakshatkara. Sakshatkara is God realization. In God realization, there is an explosion inside, and this explosion occurs when there is complete surrender to the last. And we have the great example of Gadadhara who became Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, who extolled Bhakti and let us just study what happened to him and how he got the Sakshatkara of the Kali, the Kali in flesh and blood. How could he see this? Gadadara was an ordinary child brought up in the Kamar Kapoor, a small village in Calcutta, near Calcutta and he had an innate desire and thanks to his parents, a sense of surrender, a sense of Shraddha came on to him and he started slowly worshipping, developing lot of love for gods and the divine dispensation took him to Calcutta and he landed up in that Dakshineshwar temple and in Dakshineshwar temple every day he was worshipping Mother Kali. And his worship was very, very special. It was not with any of the mantras, it was not with any of the conventional ritualistic things, but it was a living worship. Considering Mother Kali in flesh and blood, Gadadara was worshipping her to the utmost. As Krishna said, Mayeva Mana Adhatsva, Mai Buddhim Niveshaya, Divasishya Si Mayeva, Ata Burdham Nasamshaya. His whole mind was totally absorbed in the worship of Kali. He intensely loved Mother Kali. From the Kama, he had raised to the Prema, sacrificing everything, and he had raised to the level of Bhakti, in which he started surrendering himself. And the whole day, he was in the place of worship. He was doing the Japa. He was the singing the glory of the God. He was having the devotional sessions. And whoever comes, you know, people could see that intense love, intense devotion for Mother Kali. He was unaware of the surroundings and hours used to pass like minutes and the whole day he used to be in the temple. And in the nights he would go into a burial ground where nobody would come. It was total isolation. Sitting there he went on doing the japa of Mother Kali. So he was occupied all the 24 hours in a day and as he says, not even a single moment his mind went astray. Every thought was related to Mother Kali, the glory of the Mother Kali, the grandeur of Mother Kali, all the qualities of divine Mother Kali, how Mother Kali has been the embodiment of all Shakti to establish Dharma in the society. And even in the terrified form, 
Gadadara was able to see the divine manifesting in Mother Kali. So every thought was related to Mother Kali and his mind was fully immersed, saturated with Mother Kali, 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 Kali was an embodiment. And as we said, in Hanuman was such a great bhakta and in every hair there was the reverberation of Rama, Rom, Rom, Me, Ram, Nam, as it is often said. Similarly, in Gadadhara, every cell of his body was reverberating with the Kali. But still, he was not getting the Sakshatkar, he was not able to see the mother Kali, and therefore, many, many months and years have passed. Now, he started getting the doubt, he started getting the agony, and he would pour out his heart in front of Mother Kali. Oh, Mother Kali, one more day is past and the evening bell rings in the temple and still, why you have not given me darshan? Why you have not given me darshan? And when this went on and on, two days, three days, five days, six days, he was becoming more and more tense, more and more anxious, more and more concerned as to why he is not getting that. Then it flashed on him that, yes, I have given everything possible to Mother Kali, but I have not given something very, very subtle which I have to today give. His mind was very silent today, highly satisfied and he had planned the whole approach. And by evening, all people had left from the temple, the evening bell has rung and the doors were shut. It was in the night and he has decided, yes, now today, I am going to sacrifice my loss to Mother Kali and he gets into the sanctum sanatorium, the Garbhagruha and the Mother Kali, the whole sculpture is there in front of him. He stands and then he says, Mother Kali, now please accept my offering of the last bit of my existence and with great joy and satisfaction. He just pulls out the sword from there and is about to hit himself, cut his head and offer himself at the altar feet of Mother Kali. And then came the explosion, then came the great revelation that Mother Kali comes in professional blood and with the Abhaya Hasta, with the blessing hand, gives the darshan for Sri Ramakrishna. Gadadara has seen Mother Kali and when he was prepared to give up his life, the last bit of his attachment to the life in the form of prana, then comes the great revelation and the Kali is fresh in blood and she starts blessing. Later on, Sri Ramakrishna explains that soon he went into that Saguna Samadhi, Savikalpa Samadhi, in which Mother Kali stayed in flesh and blood, so slowly he lost his external awareness and he was in that immense ocean of bliss, ecstatic joy and bliss. And when he stayed in that until morning, then he has realized the highest truth. He has realized that God exists. It is possible to see God in flesh and blood. It is this realization that made him answer in affirmation when Swami Vivekananda came asking that question to everyone, have you seen God? A brilliant genius brought up in the western tradition, the young Narain was going and asking, seeking reality, seeking God realization. Every yoga master who comes, every sannyasi who comes, everybody he will go and ask one single question, sir I don't want theories, please let me know whether he has seen God. And nobody could answer him in affirmation. And somebody said, well, if at all you want to probably see somebody who has seen God, please go to Dakshineshwar. And in Dakshineshwar, you have a man, Gadadhara, Sri Ramakrishna Paramahams, and probably he can show you God. And without wasting any more time, the young Narain, the genius of the times with wonderful memory, photographic memory, and brilliance of the highest order, he runs to Dakshineshwar and sees this old man standing there and with a beautiful smile he invites with an open arm, come, come my dear boy, I have been waiting for you so long, why you have not come? But as 
his objective scientific openness would allow him. Narain simply asked, sir, please let me know whether he has seen God. That's all what I want and nothing else. You know. And for the first time, he got the answer in affirmation. He said, yes, yes, I have seen God. Would you like to see God? I will show you. I will show you. How could he say this? It is because of that immense realization he had, Kali Darshan. And he says, you see, there is a distance between me and you, but I have no distance between me and Mother Kali. Mother Kali is all the time in my mind and the Kali is a living reality for me. And if you are interested, I will show you. Therefore, God realization is true. It is possible to see God. And what Sri Ramakrishna realized was that it is the real entry and not the end. And this is what Arjuna had reached the stage. Arjuna has come to that surrender, hearing all the explanations of Lord Sri Krishna going deeper and deeper. His mind has started coming into that balance. And now the stage has come where he has heard from Krishna that the Lord exists everywhere. The God exists everywhere, even in the trees, even in the brooks, even in the wind. And it is this existence that one has to realize. And when Krishna says this, Arjuna, please, please, please show me that wonderful form. And he was ready for the Sakshatkara. And when this happens, he gives him the divine darshan and shows that bewildering Vishnu Rupa. And what does Arjuna see in the Sakshatkara? He sees hundreds and thousands of hands spread everywhere. In the war field, he is sitting on the chariot and the Krishna showing that Vishwarupa, the universal forum, hundreds of heads of all types and in the front, in the back, in the side, to the left, to the right, it has spread everywhere. Nantanna madhyam na punastavadim Pashami Vishweshwara Vishwarupa. I am seeing that bewildering form and it is spread everywhere throughout the sky, in the whole space, in front and back and sides, wherever he sees, it is the same bewildering type of form. And when he starts seeing that Vishwarupa, the universal form, then he sees not just as a static thing, it is a dynamic entity. And slowly, the faces are turning fierce, they are full of anger, they start taking the fierce look of a Rudra Bhayankara, the person who is about to destroy, then with the face of anger, the tongues have started coming out from each of the heads, and as the tongue comes out, the fire starts coming out, as the blazing fire which starts spreading everywhere, and the whole war field is full of fire consuming everyone and one by one all the great warriors from the opposite side, the, all the Kauravas, then the Karna, then the Duryodhana, then the Dronacharya, everybody getting consumed into that fire, into the bosom of that Vishwarupa and Arjuna started seeing this terrific forum and in the Vishwarupa when he starts seeing this, his mind is totally bewildered and he could not take up this any more. But in that clearly the vision is shown, the future is shown that you are going to win and Kauravas are going to lose. And there may be the biggest of the biggest of the invincible warriors on the other side. The Chiranjeeva Shatama is there, the invincible Dronacharya is there, the great Mahagnani who has got the complete conquest over his death, the Bhishmacharya is there. In spite of it, see, the dharma is going to raise high, is going to win the battle. That is the message that Krishna conveyed to Arjuna and said that this is the truth, this is the reality. And when Arjuna saw this, he says, I cannot anymore take this. And he is bewildered, he is full of fear at the terrific forum and tells to Krishna, Please, please show me your other form. Please show me that soft form. And then 
tells to Krishna, Krishna, please, I cannot take that form anymore. Please show me that form. When he says this, then Krishna says, okay, now I am going to show you my normal form and comes back to his normal form and tells to Arjuna, oh Arjuna, look here, nobody has seen this universal form and even the gods and goddesses, they very much wanted, but nobody saw. Adrushta purvam rushito spi drushtvam bhayena chapravyatitam manome tadeva me darshaya deva rupam prasida devesha jagan vivasa. I rejoice that I have seen what was never seen before. But my mind is confounded with fear. Show me that form only, O God. Have mercy, O God of Gods, O Board of Universe. Please show me your original thing. And in that is contained the conclusion that God exists and it is possible to see God in flesh and blood. And Gadadhar also understood that God exists in various forms and all paths of bhakti are true. Whatever God we worship, in whatever form, we get the darshan in the same form. You know? Then Krishna says that this form that we have seen is not easy to see. Sudur darshamidam rupam drishtavanasi yanvamam deva apyasya rupasya nityam darshana kankshinaha. Very hard it is, O Arjuna, indeed, to see this form of mind which you have seen. Even the gods and goddesses are very eager to see this forum, but none of them had a chance. And therefore, this Vrishtarupa Darshana is a very rare opportunity got by Arjuna. And therefore, he is extremely fortunate as Krishna says. And he says that this universal forum is the God realization and it is possible to see God in flesh and blood. So, what is the key point? The key point is total surrender, surrender to the last, when we are prepared to give up the last bit of our attachment to the prana, to the life itself, when we are prepared to cut ourselves at the altar feet of the Lord, then there is going to be an explosion, there is going to be sakshatkara, there is going to be the seeing of the Ishta Devata. That is the secret that Gadadara learned, that is the secret Arjuna learn. That is the secret that all bhaktas learn. But for us, even to surrender, it is so difficult because we are so much attached to our ego, we are so much attached to our likes and dislikes, our strong preferences and we cannot surrender. So, Vivekananda says, why it is so difficult? Because we think that in surrender, we lose our individuality, we lose all our power, we lose all our creativity, we lose all our intelligence, that is our notion. But he says, no, no, surrender is no belittling of ourselves. Surrender is a process of expansion. Surrender, the process of surrendering our ego is a process of expansion of our personality. And all the faculties are going to blossom. And once we understand, then it becomes very easy to surrender. Very easy to surrender to your Ishta Devata. Gadadara did not stop with the realization of Kali. He was a scientist par excellence. He said that I want to expound the other paths of bhakti. There are people who worship Sri Rama. There are people who worship Krishna. There are people who worship Christ. There are people who worship Muhammad. And is it that everybody who worship their own Ishta Devata? will get the sakshatkara of their Ishta Devata. Look at his scientific openness and adventurous spirit, his tremendous zeal of doing the experimentation. Then soon we find Gadadara in a very peculiar position. He took on the role of Hanuman as a monkey and he started living on the tree. And imagining that he is completely that Hanuman he took 
to all the actions that a Hanuman, a monkey, a Vanara would do and at the same time worshipping Lord Rama with utmost devotion. He had learned the art of devotion. He knew how he has to saturate his mind with the thought of Sri Rama, doing the japa all the time, Sri Ram, Ram, Ram. The whole tree started reverberating with the Ramanam and singing the glory of Ram, dancing the holy Ram. Went on and on for days and within weeks he found that his saturation as Hanuman was so deep that his coccyx bone had extended by a few millimeters which were recorded resembling that of the tail of Hanuman. Such was the intensity of his devotion and you could see that every hair was reverberating with the Ramanam as Hanuman would do and soon he gets a Sakshatkar of Sri Ram and he sees Rama coming flesh and blood in front of him when he was prepared to give up his whole life and he had realized the truth that yes, the Dasya Bhava, the devotion of Hanuman to Sri Rama as master also would practify to give the Sakshatkara of Sri Rama and that is the wonderful experiment that he did. Then he took on to the next experiment which was more devastating that he wanted to experiment on Sri Krishna Prem. Taking on to the role of a feminine character, Sri Radha, he wanted to worship Krishna and now he started wearing the dress of Radha, started getting into the feminine company. In the beginning, all the women folk were stunned to see Gadadhara coming and staying with them with a new dress of Radha and soon they found that his genuine devotion was so sincere that they found that he was really taking on the role of Radha, worshipping all the time Krishna as Radha would do for Krishna. Days and weeks rolled, his mind was absolutely saturated with Krishna Bhava. The Mudura Bhava of Radha to Krishna, loving as the dearest spouse Radha's Powering love had raised to the level of prema and so was Gadadharas. Gadadhara was pouring his heart to his beloved Krishna and raising himself from the level of karma to the prema and to the level of bhakti. He knew that when this reaches the pinnacle of glory, the zenith of total satisfaction and saturation, he has to give up his life to see the great Lord Krishna. And the time came where he saw Krishna in flesh and blood. By this, Gadadhara had realized that God exists in various forms. You know, all paths of bhakti are true. Depending on what type of God we worship, in whatever form we get the Sakshatkara, we get the Darshan in the same form. That is the second conclusion he got. The first conclusion was that God exists. It is possible to see God in flesh and blood. In the second conclusion, he found that all paths of worship are true and it is possible to see God in flesh and blood and whatever we worship. If you worship a small Rama as a baby, you get the Sakshatkara of Sri Rama as a baby. If you worship the Kodanda Pani Rama, then you will get the Kodanda Pani Rama as our darshan and similarly if you worship Krishna as a small baby you will get the darshan of a small baby of a Krishna but if you worship Krishna as a great lover of the gopis then you get the sakshatkara of Krishna as the lover of gopi if you worship Krishna as the purnavatara Krishna as the universal form of Krishna then you get the darshan and therefore in whatever form you worship your fond God, you will get exactly the same form of God and you get the Sakshatkar and it was the wonderful conclusion that he got, the second conclusion. And these conclusions came at a time when it was the dark ages in our country. It was 
the later part of the 19th century where the people had lost all their moorings, the whole grandeur of our civilization, the grandeur of our Indian culture was lost from our midst and the British had succeeded in brainwashing us completely through their education system. As Macaulay said, I am going to develop such an education system in India that I am going to prepare clerks and slaves who will have no individuality, who will completely remove from their minds all that is great in them and such an education system was installed here and by 1850-1860 best of the intellectuals in our country have lost their confidence as we have in Indian culture. They thought our culture is a barbarous culture. It's a worshipping of the stones and trees and rivers and there is no grandeur about it. A time has come that we have to change. We have to follow the Westerners. We have to follow the Britishers who are full of scientific zeal and discipline, who are full of intelligence and logic and they have been able to achieve great scientific feats. They have been able to have great technological advancement and it is time that we follow them and become ardent followers of the British and throw away all that is old, all that is hog in our country and that was the country which had ruined us and the best of the intellectual had started thinking this way. Even the father of Sri Aurobindo, he said, I don't want to keep my children in this nasty culture, the stone worshipping culture and going and worshipping and chanting Ram Ram or Krishna Krishna in the temples. I want to keep him in the modern university of United Kingdom in London and such were the intellectual giants in our country completely lost their moorings and they never talked about the word God. They always talked about science and technology. That was the age where we found India in its worst dip, the darkest age in our history and you know, at that time resurrection was necessary and that resurrection was done by the experimentation of Sri Ramakrishna. When Ramakrishna as Gadadhara from Kamar Kapoor, he came over to Calcutta with the hope that I will get a good teacher to pursue this path of divinity the path of spirituality so that I will be able to see God what was happening in Calcutta. Calcutta there was nobody who talked about God. People were immersed in ramp materialism. Everybody was interested in making money. Everybody was totally immersed in getting more and more for themselves, not caring for others and going the scientific or technological way at all and nobody was interested in God. It was a shocking, shocking revelation for Gadadhara. But as an individual, he had determined, he had committed himself, he had the prime love and he started doing this bhakti. He continued his path, his divine pilgrimage to see God and with a tremendous amount of his commitment and staying in the Dakshineshwar temple and with total saturation of his mind and kali, he saw how he got the darshan of Mother Kali, later on how he got the darshan of Sri Rama, Shri Krishna and he had unraveled the biggest mysteries of our culture that yes, God exists, it is possible to see God in flesh and blood. And that was the message that he transmitted to the best of the western minds in Swami Vivekananda, the young Narain who came with the devastating question, have you seen God, the direct question and he was able to answer in affirmation. So the spirituality was resurrected in this great revolutionary adventure that Gadadhara embarked on. And it was total commitment, his intense shraddha, his intense love, his intense respect in our Indian tradition and his love for God that made it possible to see God. Even as a young boy, a naughty boy, a stubborn boy, he has shown his life how he, man can rise to the levels of Godhood to see God if only we put all our efforts with the prime love to see God. 
and that is the wonderful history of modern times in the path of devotion and the bhakti is the science of promotion culture. As individuals, we will start the whole journey by dealing with our simple emotions, the daivi and the asuri sampath, reduce our negativities and start developing the positivities and raise ourselves from the normal friendship to the real friendship, the friend in need is the friend indeed and that is called prema in which you go on giving and giving and giving without expecting anything in return. Mother's love for the child comes into this category of prema and from there you rise to the level of bhakti in which not only you give up your material positions in preference to yourself, to your person whom you adore, the God that you worship and not only your material possessions, you give up your own preferences, give up your ego and that is the process of surrender, sharanagati, prapatti bhava. When you invoke this feeling of surrender, when we give up our ego, then there is going to be an expansion that starts, the personality starts growing, the mind becomes clearer and it starts getting saturated more and more and the time will come when we are prepared to give up our last bit of attachment to the life, when we are prepared to cut ourselves asunder, to sacrifice at the altar feet of our divine Lord whom we worship, then there comes the Sakshatkara, there comes the God realization and that is the culmination of the first phase of Bhakti in which we are able to see flesh and blood. Let us all start moving towards this divine pilgrimage and start reaching those heights of Sakshatkara. Thank you.